Now, let us start with advantages of e-filing and importance of e-governance. Various advantages of e-filing and e-governance may be identified as good. With statutory compliance, business organizations will be enabled to register a company and file statutory documents uh, quickly and easily. So, first, first, what is the benefit is uh, quick statutory compliance means certain compulsory rules and regulations which are to be followed shall be easily uh, be available for complying in the organization. Then, next we have. Uh, E easy access, uh, public can have easy access to relevant records and get their grievances redressed more effectively. So, the, they, they should have easy access, that is, they should be able to access the records and get their grievances redressed more effectively. Then everything was offline. Uh, what used to happen was to find the documents, to find the appropriate solution for the problem, it used to take time. So as it took more and more time, uh, the companies had more and more problems which were not being getting resolved. So now it has become a little easier. Then efficient services. Professionals like chartered accountants, company secretaries, etc. will be in a position to avail better and efficient services to their client companies. So uh, since uh, everything has become online, it will be more easy for the chartered accountants, company secretaries to uh, fill the forms and to uh, have all the documents verified easily and to uh, save the documents and also physical work shall reduce. Verification. Financial institutions will be able to find registration and verification of charges easily. So there shall be verification and we shall be able to uh, find registration and verification of charges easily. Effective governance. Government is able to, uh, able to become proactive and can ensure effective compliance of relevant legal provisions and government, uh, corporate governance. Then save money and time. The main advantage while implementing uh, electronic governance will be to improve the efficiency of the current system, paper-based system that would in return save money and time. Then uh, allows government transparency. E-governance allows for government transparency because it allows the public to become information, uh, informed about the government is working on as well as the policies they are trying to implement. Better services by the Ministry of Corporate Company Affairs, MCA. MCA employees shall be equipped to deliver the best of the services. So these shall be the benefits of uh, having e-governance. Now next what shall be the disadvantages for e-governance? We shall be studying about that. Inaccessibility uh, and e-government e site that provides web-based uh, access and support often uh, does uh, not offer the potential to reach many users including the including those uh, who live in the remote areas have low, low literacy levels and ex exist on power, poverty line incomes. So inaccessibility, certain there, there are certain uh, people who live in remote areas and they should not be able to have that much literacy level or that much poverty level that they can afford to buy everything and provide online services. Then hyper super super resilience. Uh, once the government begins to develop and government uh, bec and become more sophisticated, the citizens will be forced to interact electronically with the government on land scale. This could potentially lead to a lack of privacy for civilians as the government can obtain more and more information about them. So, the citizens will be become more sophisticated and the citizens will be forced to interact electronically through the uh, to government on a larger scale cost. Although large, uh, large amount of uh, money is spent on the development and implementation of e-government, uh, the outcomes and effect, effects of trial interest based governments are often difficult to gauge or unsatisfactory. Lack of personal interaction. The disadvantage of an electronic government is to move the government services into an electronic based system. This system loses the person to person interaction which is valued by a lot of people. The central government is empowered to make rules 
for electronic filing of various returns, documents, etc. Such rules can provide authentic, uh, authentication of such returns in the prescribed manner. Electronic inspection of such documents is also possible and permissible. Fees can also be paid through electronic means. Under Section 398-2, the central government is also empowered to frame scheme for carrying out the provisions as specified by electronic means. The Information Technology Act 2000 is applicable to the electronic records to the extent the provisions are not inconsistent with the Companies Act. Companies Electronic Filing and Authentication of Documents Rules 2006 with effect from 1906-2006 are made for the purposes of e-filing of documents and its authentication. Similar provisions may be made under the Companies Act 2013. So these are the, the this is an organization or the central government is empowered to make rules for electronic filing and all the returns have to be filed electronically and the authentication shall also be provided electronically. Then uh, e-filing basic uh, understanding of MCA portal. Now let us understand about the MCA portal. What does MCA portal do? MCA portal is Ministry of Corporate Affairs portal which is being uh, managed by the uh, Companies Act and uh, is under the register. A major e-governance initiative MCA 21 has been taken by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs MCA. It envisages e-filing of all documents relating to company matters on the MCA portal. All physical filing of uh, forms has been discontinued and the e-process of uh, e-filing has been started. It is almost a paperless working of MCA subject to concern a certain exceptions where paperwork is unavoidable due to legal or statutory requirements. At present, winding up procedure has not been discovered under the said program. The project is termed as MCA 21 and was implemented with the help of Tata Consultancy Services in 2006. Now, Infosys is managing the program. The project is fully operational from 2006, the user has to access at http www.mca.gov.in to upload the form, inspect the documents, get other irrelevant information and details. So if you have interest in the, these things, you can go to the MCA portal and you can understand how it is operating, what is done, how are things managed there and uh, how to upload documents and also get relevant information. What is a portal? Now let us understand what is a portal. A portal is a single website giving structured access to other websites of all government departments. Through a portal, one can easily find out government information and services from one place without the need to understand how government is structured and which sites you need to use. Portals are generally grouped by industry or sector types such as uh, education, health, construction industry. Sometimes they are organized on the basis of services, for example, licensing, registration or purchasing. The portal shall be portal shall be a website providing search capability for and links into the online and offline information and services using a consistent classification system. As a result of this, an integrated catalog of information can be searched through the internet. So if one searches for license, he would be given a choice of, uh, for example, dog driver gun licenses. Many times it has been observed that the way uh, the way government describes something and what a person calls it are two different names. The government has to make sure that if one thing, if one is looking for a particular government service or a piece of public information, one should find it. In short, a government portal should be provided with a single internet address through which the one can search online, offline government information and services without having to go to individual government agency websites and also provide a complementary alternative to a cross the counter uh, and telephone contact with government. Now next we have is about the MCF portal. For the purpose of implementing e-governance strategy, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has launched an MCA portal, MCA 21. MCA 21 project is designed to fully automate all processes related to the 
proactive enforcement and compliance of the company uh, of the legal requirements and the companies act with the, this initiative e filing of all documents relating to company matters is now is possible now mca is taking steps to move from traditional paper based operations to paperless transaction as a result various conventional forms prescribed for certain transactions have been adopted for use through the electronic medium these forms have been simplified and standardized for electronic filing MCA 21 and its objective. MCA 21 is an e-governance initiative of Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Ministry of Government of India, that enables an easy and secure access of the MCA services to uh, the corporate entities, professionals, and citizens of India. The MCA 21 application is designed to autom fully automate enforcement and compliance of the legal requirement. Uh, legal requirements. Companies Act 2013 has and liability limited liability partnership community to meet their statutory obligation and all process related under the uh, under the Companies Act. The MCA 21 application is available through the single point of contact for all MCA related services, which can be easily accessed over the internet by corporate entities and professionals and citizens of India. The MCA 21 application offers the following: enables the business community to register a company and file statutory documents quickly and easily. Provides easy access of public documents. Uh, helps faster and effective resolution of public grievances. Help registration and verification of charges easily. Ensures proactive and uh, effective compliance with relevant laws and corporate governance enables the mca employees to deliver best and great services so this was about the mca services and how the mca portal operates now next important features of the mca portal no need to visit roc that is register of companies companies professionals and public at large need not visit the register of companies roc offices as it would be possible for them to interact with the in ministry uh, using the mca 21 portal from their offices or home by going to the facil uh, felicitation centers established for this purpose uh, multiple operations to make payments the users will have multiple options to make payments uh, make pay make payments in the online mode either through credit cards or through the internet banking facility besides this the traditional payment through demand graph would be accepted against a system generated challenge to more than 200 bank branches across the country dian introduced the program also introduces uh, introduces the concept of direct identification number which is a unique and lifetime identification number issued to all current and prospective directors it is mandatory for all the directors who, who wish to interact with the ministry in future to acquire a din so the din is a director identification number which is the which is a unique identification number which is given for the lifetime of the director and which can be used uh, for the conveying any thing to the ministry then service request number srm with the help of this system the stakeholders are established to track the service request through a through a service request number srm manual filing of documents is continued mca has uh, has bid a uh, notification on number gsr 56 e dated 10 february 2000 Six issued the company's central government's uh, general rules and forms amendment rules 2006 and notified new forms. The statutory filing of forms and returns in the offices of ROCs is now on uh, the basic of new form e forms only for from 15/9/2006. All manual filing of documents has been. discontinued so they have discontinued all the e filings and everything and 
uh, everything has to be directly uploaded to the portal where they, they have given space to be uploaded. At present, permanent documents of existing companies such as memorandum of association, current charge documents, etc. are maintained in the paper form by various registrar of company offices. Most of these documents have been converted into the electronic format. It is to be noted that the scope of e-filing covers only the offices of ROCs, regional directors and uh, regional directors at the headquarters at New Delhi and it uh, does not include official liquidators, company law board tribunal and uh, courts are up till now. The MCA 21 covers services provided by the secretary at, at New Delhi. Uh, the four regional directors RD and uh, and the 20 officers of the registrar of companies uh, situated throughout the country. Now next is e-filing. So we came to know that uh, the head office is uh, situated at New Delhi and it does not include official liquidators but it includes company law board tribunals. So now let us understand what is e-filing and how it is carried on. The e-filing facility includes incorporation and registration of uh, new companies, filing of annual returns and balance sheets, registration and verification of charges, filing of forms for change of names, address, uh, director details, inspection of documents, application of various statutory services from MCA, investor grievances, redressal. So these are the e-filing facility which includes firstly uh, it has incorporation and registration of new companies. Then next it has uh, it has filing of annual returns and balance sheet. Then registration and verification of charges. Then uh, filing of forms for change of names, addresses, director details. Then in inspection of uh, documents. Application for various statutory services from MCA. In e-filing system, the ROC will have the function as uh, the back office of the ministry. Facilitation centers, that is physical front offices, have been established to provide necessary assistance to, do, to these companies who, who find it difficult to adopt e-filing in their initial stages. The digital signatures of various uh, office bearers of the companies are necessary for submission of e-forms even though the digital signatures of the third parties are also necessary in certain cases. Classification of e-forms. So as the standardized and uh, for the better understanding e-forms have been classified into the following categories. First is registration new companies, then compliance related filing. It includes balance sheet and profit and loss, annual return, return of deposits, statutory reports, cost audit reports, etc. Then change services. It covers matters related to change in the capital structure, change in the registered office, etc. Then charge creation. Registration of charge created, modified is required to be filed with ROC. Investor complaints. As a part of investor services, complaints can be filed by investors through the e-filing system. Making applications for approval of ROCs. ROC is empowered to give direction in respect of the matters relating to the change of the name of an existing company and the conversion of a public company to a private company. Approval of ROC is also necessary for extension of time period for holding an AGM and holding an AGM at a place other than the registered address, amalgamation of companies, extension of the period of annual accounts, declaring a company as uh, different, uh, etc. A few new e-forms have been also prescribed by the MCA. Information services. A few forms are required to be filed for information purposes as per the Companies Act such as Form 23 for filing resolution uh, and agreement Form 35A to transfer shares of a company to another company etc. Search facility. The system of e-filing provides the search facility for viewing public documents getting certified copies 
fine incorporate identity numbers yeah and checking names of the companies finding name availability etc so these are the uh, this was about uh, this was about the classification of e forms when we go to the portal we, we can find these types of forms available for the pay, uh, for the pay companies and uh, for the secretaries to fill these forms as per their requirement then the e filing process the purpose of e filing on mca uh, mca1 has to download the e form and fill it in an offline mode every form has the facility to pre fill the data available in mca21 system once the e form is filled one has to validate the e form using pre scrutiny button then affix the relevant digital signatures and save the form thereafter you have to connect uh, to the internet to carry out the pre fill and pre scrutiny functions the step by step process is given below the uh, filed up e forms is required to be uploaded on the mca mca21 portal on successful upload the sr and uh, request service request number would be would be generated and then you have to make payments of the statutory fees once the payment has been made the status of your payment and filing status can be tracked on the mca21 portal by using the track your payment payment status and track your transaction status link respectively with a for with a personal computer of reasonable configuration a printer scanner or internet connection and the digital cert uh, certificate one can carry out uh, e filing to the following five steps so for the process of filing uh, e filing process firstly we have to use the registration of the user e filing will be allowed only for registered user one can register uh, register with the guidance available on the mca21 portal to create his personalized login id if the user wants to sign an e form as an uh, authorized signatory he then he has to register his digital signature certificate if the user procures a new dsc he has uh, to register his new dsc again so firstly he has to create his own personalized login id after that he has to create a digital signature and uh, if he uh, if if the user is a new one he has to create a new dsc again then second step is downloading of e form e forms are in the pdf format they are freely downloadable with adop with adobe reader v7.0.05 to link uh, available on mca21 portal downloading can be done once i uh, one one has to familiarize himself with the new set of e forms available on mca21 at any time one can read the related instruction kit to get himself familiar with the procedure in case of difficulty view help menu and then after this uh, the third step is uh, completing an e form one can avail the option of the uh, option to fill in an e form offline as per user's convenience one can complete these formalities without staying uh, connected to the internet e forms are to be filled in and uh, digitally signed by selecting pre fill option one can avail the system of filing certain information on e form automatically which is already available in the database of mca one can do automated pre scrutiny to ensure that the e form is in completed all respect The supporting documents can be attached to provided they are in pdf format in the mca21 portal there is provision for conversion of popular formats uh, such as microsoft office into pdf format it is advisable to keep the size of attachment as minimum as possible it is necessary to sign the e form by more than one person then such an e form should be sent either on suitable media or uh, as an email attachment or the file should be tra transferred over the network to another person who has to sign it digitally while obtaining such multiple signatures care has to be taken that contents of e form are not altered after it has been signed if at any stage the contents of an e form are altered the document will become invalid and it will be rejected during the process of e filing once the digital signatures have been made the e form is ready for submission then uh, once uh, we have filled the form we can download it offline and fill the form and uh, completing the e form becomes important 
So uh, we shall be studying about the further steps in the next class.